sexual promiscuity is formally defined as engagement in casual sexual behavior, often with many different people. In modern slang language, us younger generation kids see it as sleeping around, getting some, or getting around a lot. When we compare the acceptances of behaviors of sexual promiscuous men to that of women, we actually see a double standard. And what I mean by this can be defined through the number of words that we describe sexually promiscuous men versus that of women. Julia Stanley, the author of The Prostitute, Paradigmatic Woman, actually did research on how many words there are to define men and women who are sexually promiscuous. For men, she found about 22 words to describe these men who get around a lot. And these can include, you know, player, stud, hunk, playboy, and usually um, our society sees these people, sees these men as, you know, great. They, if they get around a lot, that's okay. We see them in a positive type of way, and they're actually celebrated or praised to get around a lot. But in comparison, when women get around a lot, they're seen as these prostitutes, these sluts, these whores, and to define sexually promiscuous women, there's about 10 times that more of men. To be exact, there's 220. And when we label these words onto women, you don't see them in a positive way. That men, right? When you think of sluts and whores and prostitutes, you look at those women in a degrading way, in a disgusting way, and you look down on them. And so why is it that we have this double standard, that we're okay with men sleeping around while women, not so much? And it's because we can trace it back to another, another social standard, that while women should be kept pure, good, and innocent, men are not encouraged so much to do so, and so women are more encouraged to stay virgins. And so today, I would like to share with you how the concept of virginity actually heavily impacts a woman. And in regards to this, um, I'd like to briefly touch on what it means to be a virgin, how this term virgin relates exclusively back to women, and then how the cultural expectations or standards in a woman's culture or society can affect her. So first off, what does it mean to be a virgin, or what does it mean to have your virginity? So a virgin, in general sense, it's a person, man or woman, guy or girl, who is sexually inexperienced. And in the terms of virginity, the Encyclopedia of Sex and Gender defines virginity as a state of sexual inexperience. And this term is often used to denote the status of a person, male or female, who has never had um, penetrated vaginal intercourse. In regards to synonyms, to describe virgins, we have here pure, undefiled, and dirty, innocent. And what I would like to really focus on is this one right here, made maiden. And what we see about this is that it's more of a feminine term. That in the sense of virgin relating to gender, it's more we see it towards women and how it actually relates back to women rather than men so much. And so Jessica Valenti, the author of The Cult of Virginity and also a well-known feminist writer and speaker, she says that virgin is almost entirely synonymous with women. And this has to do with the fact that when we think of virgins, we think of pure and goodness and white and wedding dresses and cherries popping. But there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's actually no formal definition for that of a man to describe him in his virginal status. And so some of the physical characteristics that um, are seen to measure um, a woman's virginity or that of a man's. So for women, um, there are three primary things that um, cultures see that define physical virginness. So the first one is a hymen. And the hymen is a thin mucous membrane on the entrance of the vaginal opening. And also another sign of vaginal characteristic is the presence of blood during the first time of intercourse. And the last one is vaginal tightness. And in comparison, there's actually none to be proven for men, that there's no physical characteristic to show that a guy is a virgin. And so again, this, this further proves that because we have these characteristics that are specific only for women, 
but it relates back to women and how it it goes to affect the way that they see themselves or how they go about their actions. In regards to cultural expectations and standards, usually there's this common societal value that you have to maintain your virginity, or for women specifically, that they have to maintain their virginity so they're kept pure, they're kept good, they're kept innocent, and so that they're marriageable. So in terms of um, religion, the New Catholic Encyclopedia actually cites uh, virginity as the purity of bloodlines and the authenticity of family relationships depend more upon the virtue of the woman than that of the men. And so this term virginity is rarely referenced to men because it's more heavily placed onto women that the expectations of the chasteness of the bloodline rather than men who are primarily um, expected to keep on going the bloodline as we can see like from how women take on the last names of men during marriage that these women have to keep their bloodlines pure and they have to represent basically their family honor and sometimes because there's so much pressure on a woman on a woman from her culture to remain virginal to remain chaste or pure that they go through extreme measures to actually, you know, show their show that they're a virgin or show the physical characteristics that they are a virgin. And what I said before about the hymen, some women in some cultures actually go through um, a process called hymen reconstruction, where they actually get surgery to make the hymen again. So when they go ahead and have their first time having sex with their husband, that it's there, or even. Um, Another one of the characteristics that I pointed out was the presence of blood, and some women fake blood loss. And in certain cultures, like the Islamic world, um, parts of Asia, even Africa, these women, they, they use razor blades or to cut the, their vaginal opening, or they even put ground glass just so like, they can have blood during their first move. Time having intercourse, <laughs> and in the case in a case study that actually assessed the effects of women getting these hymen reconstructions and the backgrounds of women in these cultures, they found that women who have lost their virginity fear that they will either be expelled or even murdered in the name of family honor if they do not bleed during their first time in intercourse, and this is a problem because. This causes women to equate their morality, their ethics to their body, and it's restrained just to the physical being of the supposed virginity. And so to conclude that since we define what it means to be a virgin, how it relates back to um, a woman, and how culture is affecting her through that, that Valenti, um, someone I previously cited, says that virginity doesn't actually exist because it's a subjective experience. Sex is subjective because there's many different ways that we see sex or experience sex and not always is it a, about man and woman. But even so that, that even, virgin, even though virginity um, supposedly doesn't exist, that it's a term that we consistently keep going at and it's a traditional perspective that it will be one of those hard things that are hard to get rid of unless we make dramatic changes. So Jasmine, what did you think? Um, 
her central idea was how the cost of virginity impacts women. And she, just, she defined virginity and she explained how virginity relates back straight back to women and the culture expectations um, and how the culture expectations affect them. Um, to the points, that, some of the points that I thought was um, defining double standard in the beginning <coughs> and how it's unfair for women. That was very neat. And um, inclusion of a little bit of humor that she had throughout um, her presentation and the history of virginity and uh, in the context of their culture and how it relates to their family honor. Um, just a couple of minor adjustments that I think are going to be for her is um, maybe she can stand in the middle of the room. I understand that there's visual, but maybe, um, I don't know, to the middle and then um, back to the side. And then I, there were a couple of sign posts. I'm not sure if I missed them or there weren't in the, towards the back. Um, for the visual aids, they're very clearly uh, illustrated. I liked how virgin, the word virgin and virginity was clearly defined. Um, and her sighting were pretty good. I, the family writer, uh, quote, and how the word virgin and women are synonymous. And um, yeah. And overall, I think it was a practical information and information. It's an information that's thought upon a lot by pretty much everybody, but it's um, not been blatantly said. So I think that was very effective. Okay. Uh, I would agree with a couple of the points that you made here about the organization. I do think uh, some signposting could be a little bit more distinct in the body of the speech, although I thought you had a very good setup at the beginning of the presentation about what the structure is going to be. I, I shouldn't say at the beginning of the presentation because it really does take you about two minutes to get to your topic and about two and a half minutes to get to the preview of what you're going to be talking about. So almost a third of your speech has gone by before we're really getting to the the, the time for the presentation or the the, um, the topic of the presentation, uh, I, the description of the terms, for instance, that you have at the beginning, I, it just jumped into my head that that would have been a great visual uh, attention device to go along with it. Where's that list of the 200 words for women who are um, promiscuous and the 22 words that are for men that are promiscuous, and I, that would be an easy. Uh, side-by-side -side comparison to do that would you know, instantly tell us something about the perspective that people have on this issue as well. I, th I thought that uh, the first couple of slides, the first sections where you're defining virginity and uh, the, the criteria under which it's uh, looked at and some of the, th the physical characteristics that distinguish it or fail to distinguish it, I thought those were fine. Um, and you had some uh, material that you cited on those particular points that was effective. When you got to the impact on the customs and people's expectations, that seemed to be a little bit more assumed. Some of it seems to jump back to that stuff that was talked about at the beginning in your attention device. And then there's some reference to cultures that is not cited at all in the presentation. And I think you need to do that. Uh, at the very end, there's even a suggestion that we need to be able to perceive this differently. Uh, and I assume that that's related to some of those cultural issues where somebody could even be killed because they were not appropriately a virgin when they were married. Uh, you need to give us some data about that, where that happens, uh, reporting on that, uh, research on it, as opposed to just passing on us. Uh, information that I'm sure that you research, it just, it's, like I said, it wasn't cited in the presentation. I, I think you do a very good job speaking to the audience and uh, uh, relating the subject to us in a sober and straightforward manner, but also in a way that I think uh, people can relate to pretty effectively. All right, thank you.